Today we have got a football manager eclipse, well, the equivalent. It's deadline day, and we have a match on deadline day. And the match that we have is against FC Porto, a team that if we beat, we will secure a top eight finish in the Champions League group stage, and of course skip one knockout round. I'd really like to do that. And then following on from deadline day in that last group stage game, we have Man City in the league. Man City with a media prediction of first. Man City, who've already won the Champions League league stage with a game to spare. It's not going to be easy. And on top of all of that, we've got the long-awaited away day to Coventry. Well, for the two Coventry fans who want to see it. Yes, we're at the Rico Arena, or formerly the Rico Arena, for the Champions League game. So we're going to be heading there as well. Lots coming your way today. My voice is going. Let's run the intro and get straight into things, shall we? Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 97. We have played through a whole load of Football Manager. We're at the end of the transfer window. That has not been eventful in the slightest. And the reason it's not been eventful is because I haven't been able to increase the wage budget still. Yeah, you can see here, no deals made so far in January. Uh, in terms of transfers out in January, one of note, uh, William Espinosa has gone to LAFC. £5 million for our youth prospect once upon a time. I thought he might make it into the first team. He's 22 years old now. He is nowhere near good enough for our first team, sadly. So some good money received nevertheless. But in spite of the fact that we have £60 million in the bank balance, due to the fact that I'm over the wage budget, simply put, I can't offer players any salary. If I go and try and negotiate with a player, I just get limited to £100. Which, funnily enough, no one wants to sign for me on £100. I have asked for the wage budget and transfer budget to be increased yesterday. It's sat pending, so... I mean, if that gets granted, maybe things change. Now, in terms of matches since last episode, we have played six. We kept four clean sheets in a row, which was really, really nice. And one of these results, well, I was going to say it might stand out over the others. Uh, not really, because there was an 8-0 and a 7-0. But this 8-0 result against Tottenham, very, very good. Uh, yeah, we beat Tottenham 8-0. Rojas got two. Misiak got man of the match. He picked up a hat-trick as well. Sam Fay on the score sheet. We absolutely dominated this game. We needed a result like this. I think it says a lot that we win 8-0, their goalkeeper still got a 7.8 rating. Yeah, it it could have been 10. We followed up that 8-0 result with a 7-0 result in the FA Cup, albeit against Ipswich Town, who play a few levels below us. After that, back-to-back 3-0 -back wins against Leicester and Newcastle was really, really nice, especially the one against Newcastle. In this universe, they're just not very good uh, in the save game, which is... Uh, Slightly surprising considering all the money they have. We did then lose our penultimate Champions League game against PSG. I did rotate the team for this game simply because, well, I needed to. Fitness wasn't looking all that great. We've played a lot of football over the last couple of months and it was catching up with the players. But as a result of resting up the players, we were able to beat Bournemouth 4-1. Misiak again with another hat-trick. This man is like the Belgian Phil Foden. He loves a hat-trick. So unbeaten in our last few Premier League games, we have climbed to the summit of the Premier League table. We have a game in hand over Chelsea, and we are two points ahead of them. Arsenal, not a million miles away, though. Three points behind us with the same number of games played. And Liverpool, the last champion uh, of the... Premier League, they're the title holders. They have climbed back up to fourth. Do not discount Liverpool yet. They have some quite good players. Anyway, we are going to hit take part in deadline day, which is going to make all the UI yellow and exciting. I'll be honest, I'm taking part in deadline day here, and there are players attracting interest, but like I said, unless anything changes on the wage front, I'm probably not going to be selling anyone, because I won't actually be able to sign a replacement. But equally, if something dramatic did happen on deadline day, I thought you'd like to be here to witness it. So I'm going to just hit continue here, knowing that we play Porto today as well. There used to be a, I want to call it a bug. We'll call it a feature. There used to be a feature where if on deadline day you had a match, all your match UI was yellow. Because this is a licensed competition, the Champions League, I don't know if we'll get that bug. It would have been cool to have the yellow match engine, wouldn't it? I mean, I did ask the board to increase the, the wage budget and the transfer budget. It'd be very on brand if they granted that request the day after deadline day, wouldn't it? Frankfurt have made a bid for Matthew Martin. They've actually offered £10 million up front. It could rise up to £19 million. Apparently, he really wants to talk to Eintracht Frankfurt. The 19-year-old I've signed as a prospect for the future. We signed him for £8 million. He's only actually played one league game for us. In some universes, this wouldn't be a terrible sale. In this one, 
It definitely is at the moment. He's very disappointed he didn't get to move. Look, Martin, Matthew, you need to calm down, son. The finances weren't right on the deal they were offering. Uh, he really wants to go to them. 25 million. You've blown it. I, d I just don't want to sell him. I am slightly surprised that he wants to force a move to Eintracht Frankfurt. I know he's our fifth choice centre back, but he's 19. There's four hours left of deadline date. Still not heard anything about the wages. Yeah, uh, is, is that going to change? No, okay, and I think now we have a match. We do have a match. Now, you might remember last year in the Europa League, all of our home games were played at the Rico Arena or the Coventry Building Society. Look, it still has Rico on the seat, so I'm going to call it the Rico Arena still. Um, this year, if you look at our home games, we've actually been playing some home games at our own ground, which is odd because I don't think our stadium fulfills the requirements. My only theory as to why that's the case is Coventry are already using their ground on that day, so we just end up using our own stadium. But for whatever reason, this final game with the group stage, we are going to use Coventry's ground for. So we've got an away day to do. So for today's away day, we are heading to Coventry. I guess technically it's a home day. Coventry really isn't that far away. In terms of the Rico Arena, it, it's here somewhere. I actually can't remember where it is. I say I can't remember because I have been here before for an away day. And if you are wondering, Jack, if you've been here before for an away day, why are we back? Uh, my internet died last time we, we were here. I considered it destiny that my internet died during the away day, so I couldn't load any more footage. But here we are returning. I feel like it's destiny that's brought us back here to the Coventry Building Society Arena. They really should just call it the Coventry Arena, shouldn't they? Uh, I mean, the train station's named the Coventry uh, Arena. I love the fact that there's a bicycle rack just on the Google Maps noted. Also, what I love, parking. Oh, my word. Car Park B. Car Park C. It even has a bridge to the car park. They built more car parking the other side of a road. Car Park A as well. I'll tell you what. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Look at the efficiency of the parking spaces around the edge. My desires are unconventional. Now, if you are wondering, Jack, what the dickens is attached to the stadium that says Rico in big red text? Uh, fantastic question. I think it's a load of exhibition halls. The great news is we're going to be able to have a look in them. But before all of that, I just want to enjoy the car parks. Here it is. Car Park B. It's everything I thought it would be and more. It has just dawned on me that around the stadium, besides the car parking, there is literally nothing to do. So a lot of hinges on what is there to discover in the mysterious pod attached to the ground. Let's go to this dot first. And here we are in an exhibition hall. I mean, do they do exhibition halls the same days as matches? I imagine they probably don't. Car parking would be a nightmare. Here we are in the Ericsson exhibition hall. I wonder how many exhibition halls there are here. We can all learn about dedicated industry magazines. There's got to be more interesting stalls here. Did any of you ever have, like, educational school trips where you'd go to places where you could wander around exhibition halls like this and learn? I feel like I'm on a school trip, and this is the bit where you sneak off the school trip course. Uh, it's very yellow in this hallway, isn't it? Oh, oh, hmm. I, I feel like I've been here before. Is this a hotel room connected to the ground? I mean, here is the stadium. We're in a bloody... Is it a hotel room? It, I thought this was a bed. Maybe it's just an, uh, an executive suite. It feels like a hotel room. It's got hotel room energy. I'm trying to work out where I've ended up here. Um, I don't know where they, where we are. It looks like a restaurant. They love their orange juice at this restaurant too. My kind of place. You'll have to forgive me. I've got distracted by what's on TV here. Drunk parents. Why are they letting drunk parents on TV? I have done a full lap of the exhibition hall. I was thinking there might be something interesting to look at. I'll be honest. It's all bloody boring. It's all just medical technology. Okay, look, we are actually here for the away day, aren't we? In terms of the away day itself, there's not a load of dots in and around the ground. There's two on the pitch. There's one here, and I'm now at a poker tournament. I'm now at the... I assume it's the Goliath poker tournament. That would be my wild guess. I appreciate the fact that each table around the room just has a helium balloon with its number on. I, 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 there's so many people here. Everyone is showing very good restraint that I don't think I'd have not to pop all the balloons. And here, finally, is the actual stadium itself. Yeah, I know there is actually a football pitch attached to everything we've just seen. Uh, they've got rugby posts up. Presumably, they're going to change those before we play. Maybe they got confused by the fact that they were told rugby was playing here. Yeah, less than ideal. And if you're wondering, Jack, what does it look like on a match day? That I can't actually tell you. There's literally no footage submitted by fans of Coventry City of the football stadium on a match day. This is the best I can give you. We're at a concert. Enjoy it. 
I feel like this away day started so strongly. You know, car park A, B, and C. If there's a third car park, you're onto a winner. But actually, in spite of all the dots in and around the ground, there was nothing going on. I was just at a medical convention. The Coventry Building Society Arena had potential as an away day. It really did. I mean, they did have poker and car parks. <sighs> this might be my disappointment speaking. 5 out of 10. So for the first game today against Porto, in spite of the fact it would be a great win game to win, and I want us to win it, I do need to rotate things a little bit here. The Man City game is even more must win, and whilst a defeat here would probably see us drop side outside of the top 8, ultimately, we need to be as prepared as we can be for this game against Man City. The B team's had a couple of slip-ups when I've used them in the Champions League against Lille. The result against PSG, where we did lose, was a little more promising for a lot of these players. I'm going to hope, though, Today, they can put on a show and show why, you know, I'm willing to keep faith with them. There's some very good players here. I need them to show it on the pitch. Okay, Alex over a corner. Two minutes into this game, whipped towards the back post. An NDIA's header. That was not far wide. Porto now with a corner of their own. Why is it blue on blue? Why, why is NDIA pushing over Hato? This is kick clash central, isn't it? It... Football manager this year does have an issue with kit, cl cl kit clashes, doesn't it? Apparently, I have an issue with talking as well, which is great. Uh, I think we're going to have to go to 2D here, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Salvedra to shoot. Can Schumacher save it? No. Okay, let's go to 2D. I don't want to watch the replay. Okay, I mean, we're still a goal down in this game. The good news is we have had a few more shots. The bad news, they've not resulted in anything actually meaningful half an hour played here already we have got lots of very very good players on the bench if i want to bring them in have got a couple of players missing at the moment away at the asian cup so we have had to rotate things over the last month you wouldn't really know that looking at the scoreline uh, with the exception of this game here but you know what we'll take that mosquero with the assist karim kanate he's been complaining about a lack of first team football he might be throwing himself into first team contention he's scored a goal here not going to pretend it was the most difficult finish in the world. Mosquera, number two, to the byline, whipped it in low, and Kanate there at the near post to score past Porto's goalkeeper, who's currently got an injury. Okay, halftime in this game. It is still 1-1. I'm kind of happy with that so far, but I am going to tell the players that I'm not happy. I need them playing better. And one man who's been disappointing this year, Sebastian Areco. You've got the ability to make a difference, mate. You're on a 6.5. You've not been scoring a load for me lately. Do something magical, please. Okay, into this second half we go. Porto with the ball on this near side. Boving back to Hato, the left back. The Dutchman lays it inside to Eric. Canate, though, wins the ball back well. Riviere, who has had a little bit of interest in him during January, to play the ball forward to Areco. Areco sadly can't get there, but a chance perhaps for us to press and try and pressure their goalkeeper carrying a knock. Rasmussen is making a run down the line. They've managed to get in behind on this far side as well, which is less than ideal. The ball is whipped in. Boving's under it. Martin half heads it away, but the chance is not over yet. Hato to the byline. He's going to float it towards the back post. It's headed back into a dangerous area. And Saavedra, who scored from the spot on this occasion, has scored from a cross. This pass here in 2D from Hato, it looped in the air. It's come down with snow on it. It's an intelligent header back in, but... I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. I think it's NDIA. It's NDIA. I'm pushing him in front of the bus. He has to do better in the air there. Okay, NDIA. Road to redemption. Lays it forward to Riviere, who's now himself caught in possession. That said, Martin has now got the ball. He goes wide to Mascara. Riviere. Back to Martin. We're having possession here, which is nice. There is going to come a point where maybe I want to bring in the big guns. I don't think we're there yet. Kanate, with a chance, it's blocked and goes out for a corner. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm bringing in Celic, and I'm also going to bring in Roger Rojas. I need the big guns on the pitch here. Also, Matthew Martin's on a 6.3 and a yellow card. Get him off the pitch as well. Time is slipping away from us here. 22 minutes to try and make something happen. A draw is almost certainly not going to be enough as well. We need two goals. Grim Kanate, he already has one. Could he get another? He forces another great save out of the keeper. Tell you what, my grandma was right with the if in doubt Karim Kanate expression she used to say. He has looked good in this game. Sadly, his efforts on goal haven't been able to get us back into things yet. But there could be a chance here, perhaps. Mascara, I think he was playing for the penalty there. He's not got it. Porto now with the ball in a rather dangerous area. Bringing it forward, however, Gilliland has won it well. Gilliland today, by the way, he's on a 7.2 rating. He's playing well. That ball by Alex... 
sensational to Kanate. He pulls it back to Gilliland. I discussed the fact he's having a good game today. He's going to cap it off with a goal. The ball here by Alex down the line was absolutely sensational. Karim Kanate in a dangerous area pulled it back. And the young Scottish product of our youth academy, he had half the goal to aim for. He found the bottom corner. You can see with the subs that we've made, momentum certainly has shifted in our favour. There is a few minutes left here to try and get a win that would allow us to bypass a knockout round game. Rojas trying to get it forward. Riviere, Gilliland, surely not again. On this occasion, Barros denies him. We will still have a chance, though, in this game. There's five minutes left. Time is slipping away. And it's with Alex here to throw it to Gilliland. Back with Alex, the young left back in the making. He tries to put a cross in. It goes out for a corner. The pressure is mounting. Not able to run a breakthrough yet, but we have still got the corner. Huari is over it. That's how you know that all the good left-footed options currently aren't on the pitch. Huari is taking the corner. He whips it in. It's half-headed away. Celic. Rojas hits the post. Huari puts it back in. Mosquera could pull the trigger. Back with Huari. Could he still get a shot away? Maybe NDIA? Back to Alex. I think the chance has gone. We have been knocking on the door here. Still maybe an opportunity, but Barros in goal collects again. Corner, Celic. The pressure is building. The pressure is mounting. We have so many players committed for here. Kanate to Celic. Lovely build-up play. He finds the top corner. I think he's onside here. VAR is going to check it. A win here would be massive. It's the 87th minute. Is it going to count? It is going to count. And Celic, he took the corner initially, and then he's just done a little bit of Celic magic here. Kanate kept the attack alive. He laid it inside. Jao Victor to Celic. And from a very, very difficult angle, he's found the bottom corner. I was really hoping that was going to be that for this game. There's five minutes of added time. Football manager, why are you messing with me like this? Alex to NDIA. We have a big game against Man City upcoming. A big result here. Would certainly give us maybe a little bit of momentum coming into it. The ball is launched for Celic under it. Boving now to David Carmo. Boving again on the near side. The Danish wonder kid at the beginning of a save game. Now a more experienced head. Porto have got men forward here. This is horrible. Rasmussen whips it in. NDIA heads it away. With them committing men forward, there might be a chance to catch them on the counter-attack. Roger Rojas was lurking away. He wins the ball back. Celic. Now in a wide area, number 14, he's got a goal. Could he cap off the performance with an assist? He floats it towards Gilliland, who's going to find the bottom corner for his second goal of this game. 4-2, game over, job done. Shelley already had what a goal in this game. He is now turned provider. This ball in, floated in. Gilliland, not the most prolific player in the air. Keeper, not at his best. It's a fourth goal for us. It's going to get us the win. And just before this game ends, we're going to go back to TV view to end the game so that I don't have to change it next game. That sounds like a good plan to me. The job is done. Oh, of course, there's one more highlight after I've changed to 2D and there's uh, from 2D and there's still the kick clash. Alex, are we going to get a third? I want Gilliland to get a hat trick. Riviere shoots wide. That's going to be that. Delighted with that performance. With that result there, we are going to finish in the top eight. In fact, you can see here we end up finishing seventh. Bizarrely, due to all the results in and around us, I think actually if we'd lost, we might have still gone through. Let's not let that ruin the narrative. We finished top seven. We're into a later knockout round. That's useful. We qualify for the round of 16. We receive 2.4 million pounds. And Gilliland, what a performance by this man. 9.7 rating for the 19-year-old. Continuing to improve. I need to keep playing him in the first team. Anyway, Man City's up next in three days' time. There's one hour left of deadline day. Nothing's happened on deadline day. Am I allowed to put deadline day in the thumbnail if nothing happened? I feel like some of you might turn up at my house and try and murder me for outrageous clickbait if I do that. I mean, technically, huge deadline day deal. Kevin Hughes has gone on loan to Bolton. Huge. It's kind of funny. Despite the fact we are crazily over our wage budget, it's still only the 14th highest in the Premier League. We're quite a poor team here at Rugby when it comes to the wage budget. When it comes to our actual bank balance, there's £60 million here. The fact I can't move any into the wage budget is annoying. Okay, we have got Man City up now in three days' time. I need to rest up the players for this one. Like I already mentioned, I did kind of rest players for this coming game, knowing that we were going to have a difficult game against Man City so far. That decision seems like a wise one. It is worth noting that Lee Min and Ken are currently away uh, with international duty with South Korea and Japan. It's the Asian Cup going on at the moment. So I don't think either of them are going to be back for this next game. That could be a little bit of a problem. Some good news, kind of. I say good news, more of a relief than anything. My request to increase the wage budget 
was rejected the day after deadline day. Imagine if the day after deadline day, they turned around to me and gone, yeah, actually, yeah, you can have some more money. Yeah, that would have been annoying. Anyway, with that said, we're going to jump straight into this game against Man City. It's been a matter of days since the last game. You can see here, Lehman is back from international duty. He does also need a rest. So I'm going to be playing Alex at left back today. As of late, I've been playing Alex at left back over NDIA. I just feel like he is a much better attacking wing back option that suits our system. Elsewhere, Ken is still unavailable. So with that in mind, Rodriguez is going to come in to play defensive midfielder over the previous backup in Jao Victor. I do feel a bit bad for Jao Victor, but I do think Rodriguez is just a slightly better player from kind of a, a technical point of view, which is needed in our system. This game is a big one in the context of the Premier League. Whilst Man City have been falling slightly off the pace as of late, they are still a very, very good team that were predicted to win the league. We need to be at our best here. We've already played them a few times this year and got some good results. Just need a repeat of it today. How hard can it be? We are playing in our iconic red away kit today. Quite why we couldn't have Porto playing an away kit. I don't know. Rojas is in behind. And I'll tell you what, if he puts a better ball into the box there, that is actually a really good opportunity because there are a couple of players queuing at the back post. As things stand though, Jorgensen for them collects. Man City do like to play the ball out from the back here and that is exactly what they are going to try and do. The ball is with Kovaljevic. I'm not going to mention the fact I tried to sign him, but just as a reminder, I could have signed him. Haaland's in behind. Her dad's face has popped up, and it's 1-0. Why do I always do this? For some reason, I always mouse down to the goalkeeper's face and have their face popped up. That's twice in two episodes I've done it. It's my football manager conspiracy theory. You know, if the opposition are through in a one-on-one, -on -one, distract their attacker by having a pop-up appear. It's never worked, but maybe it'll work one day. Haaland scored after three minutes. Okay, well, we're a goal down. We need something. This is not what I needed. Jeremy Pino's over a corner. He's whipping it towards Weidreigo. It's 2-0. It's 2. Halfway through this first half, and we have ourselves a mountain to climb. It is a corner whipped in. Haddad couldn't get down to it. It's a very good header, to be fair. Yeah, Man City have had two shots on target in this game. They've both found the back of the net. It's certainly less than ideal. They've been hyper-clinical in this game, and we have, so far at least, been left chasing shadows maybe that can change here though as we're looking to apply some pressure high up the pitch Pellegrino at left back is bringing the ball forward for them gives it to Ansu Fati Bolton gets back well reads it and now he's going to look to try and get it forward Anderson to Misiak lays it inside towards Rojas Faye eventually wins it Misiak with the ball Shellick through the middle one-on-one -on -one. and <sighs> With that miss there, I feel like that just compounded my mind. It might be one of those days. It might be one of those days where we just can't find a break. Or maybe Michael Bolton's going to score immediately. It's 2-1. I'm overreacting. Shellick whipped the ball in here. It was nodded down by Bolton at the near post. We cut the deficit to one. I've got shouty shouty with the players. There's green happy smiley faces here, there and everywhere. Ten minutes left of the half. When you look at the ratings of Man City, they've been clearly the better team in this game, but we are growing into this one a little bit in spite of the lack of the ball. It's only a one goal deficit at the break. I'm going to get shouty shouty. I believe in the lads. I'm not making changes yet, but we definitely have to play better in the second half. I mean, it's safe to say when you look at the match momentum, our goals, uh, goal, not goals, it's come against the run of play, hasn't it? We've not been good enough in this game. Sam Faze on a 6.4 rating. You know what? I've seen enough. Karim Kanate. On you come. Elsewhere, Rodriguez at defensive midfield has been poor. Jao Victor on you come. I mean, when you look across the team, there's a fair few players I could sub off here for being poor, but ultimately I'm going to bring in two players who I think can make a little bit of a difference for us. There's half an hour left here, plus any added time. Man City with the ball on this near side. Guardiol, still at Man City in this universe. He's not gone anyway. He lays it to Kovic, who's going to go back all the way to Jorgensen and goal. Now we've Alexeev, the uh, centre-back. Rico Lewis on the overlap on this right-hand side is looking to bring it forward. Miss Yak, though, reads the run well. Now we have possession. Now we need to try and make something happen with it. We've not had enough of the ball, really, in this game. And while well, we have gifted it back to them in a very generous area there, Rico Lewis to Haaland. Jeremy Pino's on the overlap. There's players queuing up in the middle. Sneddon... Has a brain fart. Harlan won the ball in a shot against the post. I'm not sure what's happened to Sneddon there. It's like he had an existential crisis. The good news is the crisis at the back is dealt with. And now we're on the counter. Karim Kanate, one on one. Keeper holds on to it. Set piece. Shellick floated towards the back post. Sneddon is under it. He heads it wide. 
Okay, Riviera is coming on for Anderson. Elsewhere, Rojas has been less than inspiring in this game. I'm going to move Celic to striker and I'm going to bring in Gilliland. He had such a good game last time out against Porto. I need another big game from the youngster here. Saying all of that, I've just noticed they've brought Guerrero on. Of course they've brought Guerrero on. 15 minutes left. The second half has definitely been more even, but there comes a point where we have to go that little bit more direct. And I think we're at that point in this game here. 10 minutes left to try and make something happen. Ansu Fati on this near side for Man City. Gvardiol stepping forward with the ball. We almost win it back off them, but they have still got the ball, Man City. They're knocking it around well. We drear go. And I'll tell you what, that is a rare Haaland mess up, isn't it? He has shot that wide. How much added time is there going to be here? Five minutes to make something happen. Truthfully, whilst I want to believe it could happen, it just doesn't feel like it is going to happen. And in fact, it's not. We are going to lose this game 2-1. It was closer in the second half, but honestly, the damage was done in the first half. Two goals down away against Man City. You're very rarely going to come back from that. That result there, you can see here, it moves us ahead of Chelsea with the same number of games played by two points. If Arsenal win their game in hand. They will be even with us. As for Man City, they've now climbed up to fourth. They have played 25 games, mind you. So despite that win, they are way off the title fight. They had to win this game to have a chance. They've managed to do it annoyingly. Our eight-game unbeaten run is going to come to a close, which is a little bit of a shame. Man City allegedly get the deserved win. I think they did deserve to win the game. Yeah, less than ideal, that one. I mean, if we want to look at a positive, we've got one less Champions League knockout game to worry about. And in terms of the upcoming games that we have here, yeah, well, we're still in a lot of competitions. Premier League, FA Cup, Champions League, the treble's still on. Now, in terms of when we're going to be back next time, I'm not 100% sure yet. Liverpool in fifth away from home is a game at the end of the month. We also have Chelsea in the FA Cup to contend with. Arsenal... We play in March alongside the Champions League knockout rounds beginning. Of course, also in March, we have a youth intake. I've not mentioned it because it's crap. Yeah, I'm sad about this too. I don't know if you can tell my voice is really, really struggling today. So fingers crossed there will be a video tomorrow. If there's not, assume I've died. Well, my voice has died. I I'm being very dramatic here. I've got a sore throat. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, do leave a like. I'll see you on the next one. It's me, Jack. I'll talk to you in a bit. I'm out.